Pandas, welcome back. Today we're doing something that's always a good time, melting metal. But we're not doing it just for fun. No, the way we do things around here, we make money recycling scrap metal. At least I do, and you can too, by following this guide to everything you need to know for simple at-home DIY melting and casting. This time with pewter. All right, now we'll proceed under the assumption that you've already watched the melting lead wheel weights video. So if you haven't seen that, links are all around, go check it out and come back. Because with that out of the way, you'll understand there is a market of ammo casters who need clean lead. And in order to get a good casting, they'll need to add tin to that lead. Tin is worth more than lead by quite a bit. So if we can get it cheap enough, the profit available could be significant. What follows is a brief adventure of what that could look like. Right, so we're at the first location. I don't know how many locations this is gonna take, um, but we've got a short list of necessary items. And beyond these, we're gonna see how much pewter we can find for a reasonable price. Um, we're at the Velu Village, the VV Boutique. It should look like, but this is just like a plastic imitation. Maybe this one, but the, the stamping is just kind of weird. Those are just aluminum. This? Yes. See the detail in the casting and the... Yeah. Second location. See, I found these. And where the color looks right, they've got these sprue marks, and I just don't trust it. So it does scratch easily. I'm wondering about this. I'm fairly sure it's aluminum. And this one's a maybe. I found that one, by the way. <laughs> yeah, I think this is a winner. Success! Two picture frames at $2 each. All right. Welcome back. So, clearly there are some things to look out for when hunting down pewter. I mean tin. Yes, pewter is 91% tin, the rest of which being almost completely antimony, which hardens it, so also nice to have when lead casting. So sprue marks indicate it could be zinc-based die cast. What you really want to look for is some kind of a stamp that says pewter or tin. It's not always stamped though, so really it's this soft silver color with the black bits in all of the edges and corners that you're on the lookout for, and the best way to test it is to scratch it with something brass, like a key. It should scratch and peel and curl fairly easily because it's so soft. You don't have to use brass, obviously, but it's easier because it's more difficult to scratch harder metals with a softer one like brass. Now I probably overpaid a bit for these because I wanted a decent pile to demonstrate with, but I'm not sure because these frames, which were the cheapest pieces, have that glass in there, which is a lot of the weight. So let's strip all of that stuff away and see what my average cost was here. Now I paid $2 for each of these. Obviously this one's the, the better deal. So we've got just over a pound here. So that's $4 a pound. Beware of candlesticks. Yeah, look out for that if hunting down pewter. Anyway, two pounds, six ounces. So that's a grand total of three pounds, nine ounces. I spent a total of $29. So it came out to about $8.30 a pound. 
Well, that isn't actually too bad, but cheaper is always better. Going forward, my plan is to keep an eye out for any really cheap pewter and grab it when I can, but also be willing to pass on anything if the price isn't super attractive. Frames, mugs, decorative candle holders, these are all great examples of things to look for. We also picked up the rest of our supplies for a total of $7. I think the size of these will make perfect little pewter coins, and I like that these are aluminum and stainless, so it keeps the scrap value if I ever change my mind on them. The rest is this pot, which I found, my camp stove, and fuel supply. And of course, PPE and flux. So into the pot it goes. These should melt fairly quickly, as the melting temperature of tin is only 231.9 degrees Celsius, or 449.5 Fahrenheit. Much lower than lead. I'll never get over how cool that looks. It's, it's fun. We want to flux it a few times to make sure we release as much carbon as possible. Skim out all of the dross, much less than the dirty wheel weights. And this time our molds are clean and preheated to help ensure a smooth, clean finish. Safely pour our tin and allow to cool before serving. It's difficult to stop myself from holding them. There's so much residual heat, it's actually really comforting. You can definitely give them a bit of a polish if you want to sand off the sort of sharp bits and hit them with some Brasso or something, but I don't really see the point since this isn't even their final form. So satisfying. So, some numbers, yes? Our total weight at the end, minus all of the, the dross and everything we skimmed off, was 3.6 pounds. Well, three pounds, six ounces. So that's more like 3.3, which is what I'm gonna call it. At a cost of $9 a pound, and we can sell them to casters alongside lead for $15 a pound, bringing us a modest profit of about $20. So clearly the trick is getting pewter cheap enough. Now it, I'm just gonna keep hunting around and keep my eye out for it. But uh, learn from my mistakes, the frames are not actually as heavy as you think after you take all of the stuff off of them. Those were the worst value compared to the other pieces I picked up. So I'm glad I did that. And keep an eye out for candle holders that are stuffed full of some sort of resin to add weight because yeah, this would have been a completely different profit margin if I'd realized and not purchased those. Oh, and I almost forgot. Comment down below if you have any suggestions on how I could get a cleaner cast than my results here today. So between this and the lead video, that covers the two ways I know to actually make a profit, melting metal down and casting it into ingots. So you can go ahead and make a decent little profit with a very simple setup. Now, if you like scrap tricks like this one, then prove it. Click the like button. Do it, I need it. It's like water and sunshine to me. Nah, for real though, these videos are pretty fun. So. I'm gonna keep making them, and you subscribe so you don't miss one. Thanks for checking this one out. Leave it better than you found it. Keep doing the thing.